love the light here and it's, it's a total polar opposite to what I grew up with. It is a long way from Armagh here, it's, it's a, what you might call a jump cut rather than a dissolve. What is the difference between a cinematographer, a director of photography and a cameraman? Because we see those titles in the end credits yeah. all the time. Um, I would say it's about $10,000 a week. <laughs> 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 but any, no, one's a very fancy title. Yeah. I actually call myself a cameraman. Right. Um, to anybody who asks me, mm. like in a plane or whatever, oh, what do you do? I, I'm a cameraman because nobody knows what a cinematographer or director of photography, they're grandiose mm. titles. In America, for instance, if I shoot a film in the States, I have an operator. Right. So I'm not allowed to actually operate the camera, which is a terrible thing. So you're physically not allowed to touch it at all? Well, you're allowed to touch yeah. it, but... Um, the, the, the operator yeah. makes the moves. Yeah. And if you're working with an operator, you can trust, yeah. like for instance, I, I work with a great operator, Peter Robertson, who did the famous Steadicam shot in, in Atonement. Yeah. And you know, I, I, once the shot was planned, all I did was kind of run after him like a little puppy. And he actually did the shot and it was all available light, it was planned, but I did a bit of zooming and a bit of exposure changes during the shot, but he did that shot. So. And that actually, that shot basically, I think, got me an Oscar nomination, but it was all his doing. Is he okay so about that? I w I, if I'd won, I was going to thank him in my speech. Good, good. But he yeah. wasn't getting the award. <laughs> <laughs> I'm expected back, you see. There's over 300,000 men on this speech privately. You have to wait your turn. It'd be great if you're not wounded. I'd order to leave the wounded behind. No, 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 leave it, Gav. Never trust the sailor on dry land. You're best all part of it. When you're on set with great Hollywood stars like Meryl Streep or, or Nicole Kidman, as you were in The Hours, I always wonder, do they look at you first? Because they know that you've been looking at them through the camera, or do they look to the director? What's the relationship there? Um, usually, you know, because you're right there by the camera, it's you that they look to. The director is usually a little bit further back yeah. for the, by the monitor, so it's that initial gaze to the, the It seems the a, a very intimate, very privileged position. It is a privileged position. I mean, it's, it's difficult in many ways because certain actresses want to look great mm. and sometimes a role doesn't demand it. And that's a, a, a very difficult position to be in as a, as a DP because, you know, you want to be in service of the story, you, but you don't want to be fired. <laughs> so, you know, I, you know, Meryl Streep's uh, playing a middle-aged woman in New York and it's a it's a very real veracity moment you know I'm not glamorizing it it's it's kind of ad hoc photography and suddenly I'm in a screening room with Meryl going I can't look like this so it, it's very scary sometimes when you're working with Hollywood actors and producers are going like the actress isn't happy mm. And you just don't want to be fired, but at the same time you want to do your best work. I think I'm only staying alive to satisfy you. Well, so that is what we do. That is what people do. They stay alive for each other. I ended up compromising by putting diffusion filter and, and lighting her softer, which I actually think is wrong for the film and, and for all her close-ups look too glamorous for, for my tastes. Mm. We built a special light for Meryl called the street light and uh, every time we come out we went, street light, it's the only light. <laughs> but it was more a placebo light, yes. a big softbox. Yeah. But um, you just got to do that sometimes. Yeah. Just back home here in Italy after filming the latest Godzilla movie on location in Hawaii. I mean, do you sometimes have to pinch yourself at the way yes. things have turned out? No, I've been really lucky. I've been so lucky um, with the way things have turned out in, in my career. Just a couple of really lucky breaks from the, the earliest low budget films that just kind of became culty, you know, like a Michael Winterbottom's Butterfly Kiss or then being in a bar in, in Edinburgh and meeting Stephen Frears and him just suddenly saying, oh, my cameraman just pulled out of High Fidelity. Do you want to come to Chicago in three weeks and come and shoot? And that was my first, 
you, like studio film, you know, I haven't looked back since that. Do you ever get nervous? Do you get the heebie-jeebies? Uh, it's when I drive in in the morning before shooting's begun. Like in, in Albuquerque where we shot the Avengers, it was mad because you're in the middle of the desert, the studio's in the desert, and you just drive over this dusty hill in the middle of nowhere, and then suddenly this truck after truck after truck after truck, and through the, the circles of hell, it was like Dante's Inferno, you're going through these layers and layers and layers of trucks. And, and it, that's when you think, oh my God, I, you just think, wow, the money that's being spent yeah. and the, the responsibility yeah. you have and yeah. don't mess it up today because this costs so much money. And, and then you get to the, the inner sanctum and it's just like the tiniest little film set. Nothing changes yeah. between that and the Avengers, Godzilla. It's always the same. It's you, the actor, a couple of lights and the silence. As soon as this happens, and action, it's total silence and you're there. And that's my home, you know, that's when you can actually start looking and, and thinking and making pictures. Let's talk about two Oscar nominations for <laughs> Atonement and Anna Karenina, working with Joe Wright, obviously great chemistry there. Um, were you gutted not to get the golden trophy? No. Uh, come on. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was not. I mean, I was so shocked that I actually got nominated oh. for both of those films. It was a great experience. I just went along and I had a laugh. And it was, I wasn't nervous. I, I sort of didn't expect to walk up there. And will you ever come back and make a film in Northern Ireland? I would we, love to. Nobody ever asks me. Hopefully, if they, <laughs> if they watch this, they, they'll realise. Hopefully. James McGarvey, thank you so much. Cheers, Mary Louise. Thank you.